is Moss from Investor Partner Group coming in live today in, in relation to how to pick a want to buy something and it's not a forever home, then do not. I always say this, that as an investor, you're allowed to make two mistakes. Okay, You would walk guilty free. Uh, make two mistakes and no harm would be done to you, right? But let me ask you, why only two mistakes? Why not six or seven? So could you could you um, divulge on that a little bit more? Yes, yeah, sure. And look, it's 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 a rhetoric question. And so if you take a step back and think about an average income earner in Australia, you know, they would be sitting somewhere around eighty to ninety thousand dollars. You know, family yeah. income of roughly about one forty five to one fifty, right? So you take six times of DTI, which is the debt to income ratio, they can usually borrow about a million dollars, which is enough for them to get two loans, um, but it's not enough to get them three loans, right? And so let me share a story here. I met a client once. They were on a combined income of $250,000. So decent income, right? But they had only two properties. And so typical mistake, you know, they started off, you know, with their first property at $1.5 million, bought a nice, beautiful home, <laughs> big backyard. Yes. Uh, they had their swimming pool at the back. And so, you know, they went all in, right? And uh, naturally, you know, they bought two more properties. All of them are in Melbourne. Melbourne is crap. Melbourne, the rents are really, really cheap. I shouldn't say Melbourne is crap, but from an investment perspective also, when you start with Melbourne, of course, you don't get the rental yields, right? You get shitloads of growth, but you don't get the yields. Yeah. And so from their perspective, their serviceability was completely blocked, even at $250,000. And so when I met them, I was like, well, this is investor 101 mistake, right? This is a typical mistake that every investor would make. And so the third time they go to the bank, the, the bank is like, well, you've done enough as to what you want to do. And so I say two mistakes is because those two properties, if you don't make those right decisions, that's it for you, right? That's it. You're done. You know, you can't do much. And so the question is now completely different as to how do you sell them? How do you remediate them? How do you come out of these properties? So I guess at this point, um, I guess, you know, these people are seasoned professionals in terms of in their own domain. You know, they could be an accountant. They could be an IT professionals. And so I guess they're smart people. But why do, why do these people uh, or, you know, early investors, you know, why do they fall in this trap? Yeah, and 100%, you know, all of these, like the client that I was talking about, super smart, right? I mean, he runs um, a project division in, in, in a big multinational IT company. So super smart people. But naturally, when you think about some of these investors, they have this fake sense of economic created around you. You know, they listen to various different property profits, property gurus, property coaches, you name it, and it's out there. So if you think about some of these things, the media's job is really to entertain. It's not to educate. And so if you are wanting to get an education from them, you would hear about, oh, you can buy 10 properties in 10 years or you can be financially independent in three to five years. What they don't realize is that the income is finite. And sooner or later, the bank would turn them around and say, look, you know, that's the door. See you later. And so what they tend to do is they don't have a strategy in place. They work their ass off, you know, in, in trying to building their portfolio. But naturally what happens is they, because they're not strategic about buying these properties, they go for non-investment grade properties or out of the two or three properties that they would acquire. You know, one may hit the mark and two may not hit the mark. They, they would buy properties which are super negative cash flow. And so when the banks are assessing them at higher rates, you know, banks are looking at it in a much more worst case scenario from a cash flow perspective. So the investors fall into this trap because of the reactive nature of their thinking. It's not proactive nature of their thinking. You know, every time they are at their back foot thinking about this, they would always fall into this trap. And look, I mean, we are prone to, you know, a lot of these things too. You know, if, if I take myself back, you know, 2015, 2016, I was super stuck. You know, I had four properties and I couldn't move anything. And so I was like, what do I do? How do I go about navigating around some of these things to unlock myself? And I guess that that's exactly, you know, I'm, I'm finding myself there. But most the question I pose to you is if, if, if it's such a massive problem and it's a real problem and, and a lot of people, including myself, can relate to that. So why are people as unaware of this? And if this is such a re real big thing, you know, wh wh why people are just not talking about it? Yeah. 
And so I don't think that it's it's that people are unaware. I think people are definitely aware. They just put a blind eye to it. And so they only realize this when they are going to the bank and asking that question. And yes. so even worse, I met I meet people who have already heard a big fat no from the bank. And so they're now looking for the solutions like you, for example, right? Yes. And so they've been in an accident. And what they are basically doing is they're looking for an insurance company to provide an insurance cover now, right? Yeah. Basically, that's the scenario that you're in, right? Yes. And so the event has already happened. So why would you think that the insurance company would give you an insurance now? Or, or can I say this? You know, they yeah. can see the storm coming yeah. towards them um, and they can see their house, you know, about to be run down or burned down or finished off by this storm. And so they're running towards people saying, hey, how can I protect my house? Well, there's no, there's no protection. You protect yeah. yourself now. There's no protection for the house anymore. And so, you know, they would meet a priest and, you know, the priest would be like, close your eyes and pray to God. <laughs> and the God would protect your house. And yeah, 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 yeah. Fingers crossed, man. I mean, it would work, right? You know, but yeah. ultimately, you know, you would meet a magician who would get them to wear some glasses where it would say that there is no storm there. And yeah. probably that magician would charge them seven thousand dollars for to make them feel happy, right? Well, in inflation, you know, everything's gone up. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And so it's important that you are in control and you are aware about some of these things. And so the important question here is not so much about why people are unaware. I think the important question is why do people end up being into these positions? 